So now in this video, we're going to focus on the NPN bipolar junction transistor. I'm going to try to simplify it as much as I can for people brand new to NPN bipolar junction transistors. It's kind of the first hurdle in electronics, the first uh, confusing thing. But once you understand it, it's actually pretty easy. And uh, so I'm starting a web page devoted to uh, trying to simplify this. And this video is going to be part of that page. But in any case, here you can see... We have an LED. I'm back kind of far because I, I want to show how much current. I set the meter so it won't output more than 25 milliamps of current because I wanted to get close to uh, 20 milliamps of current. And there you can see it's 19. I think it's right on the border as far as this power supply can tell. We got 5 volts at the rail. And uh, so it may kind of shift to 18 every once in a while. But in any case, to protect the LED, I have a 150 ohm resistor because it's five volts right there. I was trying to get close to uh, 20 milliamps of current. And so now we can uh, zoom in. And so the switch, when it's off, it doesn't allow any current. And when it's on, it lets the full current. It has practically no resistance at all. And so if we get rid of the switch and just put the resistor directly to the LED, we should see 19 milliamps of current right there. Uh, practically the same. So now the uh, transistor makes a great switch it works a bit differently though so in this video for this circuit I should say we're going to actually use a switch to be the ultimate uh, control so let's uh, zoom in we have the transistor we're gonna look at this a little bit closer later on we're gonna get right to the point we're gonna take the LED and uh, so long lead the anode is up a row that has to be more positive for it to conduct and light up Short lead the cathode is to the collector, the top pin of the transistor there. And we're going to take our 150 ohm resistor and go to the positive rail. And again, you can see we got these components in series other than when I give a false signal. No current flows through. And we can look at that right here. And uh, so the LED was barely lit even when I gave a false signal. So it's less than one milliamp of current. So we could measure that with this meter. But in uh, any case, now when I press the switch the LED turns on now you can see we have the full current right there so we're turning the transistor on and off this is the simplest way to use a transistor so the important thing though is let's zoom back in you can see here we have a resistor coming to the base of the transistor so that comes from the positive side of the power supply it does not directly affect this side at all what it does is it puts current through the base to emitter over there and that allows a lot more current so gain is multiple amount of current going from collector to emitter as you put through base to emitter that's the basic property of the transistor and whenever you look at circuits you should be thinking about that so we hit the button the LED turns on uh, completely we'll zoom back and uh, yeah we already saw that we have that full current there so I have a way of measuring the uh, current through the uh, base to emitter first we'll go to milliamps and this meter you can just leave the red probe in that spot for everything but high current so that's one reason why I really like this meter and it's auto ranging currents really the only one where you have to set it within a range of values but even then it's amp milliamp and uh, microamp and so we have 5 volts at uh, the rail there that's what I'm powering it at the base to emitter drops about 0.7 volts so just to make the math easy I'm gonna say we're working with 4 volts and this is a 10,000 ohm resistor 10 kilo ohm from uh, this kit right there and so I expect a tad bit more than uh, 4 0.4 I mean milliamps of current so 400 microamps that's just making the math easier it's probably closer to 4.3 and so I can go to uh, both sides of the switch since this is set to meter uh, measure current I mean the uh, current flows through the meter so you have to make sure you have it set to measure the uh, amount of current you can expect and there you can see 4.2 so that's in milliamps it says MA there and uh, so I'm gonna set it here and it kinda looks like a U it's actually mu and uh, the Greek letter mu for uh, micro millions of amps right there and so right now no current is flowing the switch is open and so we will uh, make this connection now instead of pressing the button 
to let the current go through the button it's going through the meter and there you can see 426 micro amps so about half an amp approximately is allowing uh, many times more so I purposely tried to get at least 50 times whatever the current I put through there I expected at least 50 times the current to flow through the transistor and uh, we'll come back to that topic later let's look more closely at what the transistor looks like chemistry wise so now here's a diagram from an unrelated topic don't worry if you can read any more of that but the uh, transistor comes uh, commonly if you're a hobbyist or whatnot in the TO92 package when you buy products you're gonna see transistors that are surface mount they get soldered directly to the board and whatnot these have pins so it makes it easier for uh, prototyping and so the light will probably be a little better there but the uh, writing is really nice on this one and the lighting is in a good spot you can see right there 2N3904 and then it has some other part numbers that may be when it was made or whatnot and uh, I don't know it the uh, data sheet might explain that and whenever you work with a component you should look up the data sheet so search for 2N3904 and look up all of the data on it but in any case one of the things the data sheet will tell you is the pin layout so you can see emitter right there that's the left pin pin number one base is the middle pin and collector is the right pin when it is a 2N3904 so now this is an NPN and uh, we might as well put the emitter to the negative rail there because that's where it's going to end up going anyways and so the uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor if you need to see the uh, words I wrote it out there so uh, collector is N and emitter is N in between them is the base so the pin layout will vary with uh, different transistors but I believe if it starts with 2N with nothing in front of the 2 but starts with 2N it will have this pin layout but in any case you can see there one of the problems is the collector and the emitter are both N type material but they're still made differently so you don't uh, just swap them out I think the collector one is a lot larger to uh, prevent if you put it in backwards you'll have problems with the lower voltages making it conduct so you want the collector more positive than the emitter so we have the emitter to the negative rail but there you can see we got NPN and so between collector and emitter there's three chemical areas and uh, so it doesn't conduct until you get some current from the base to emitter so you can see that's a diode you make the base more positive and the emitter more negative by about 0.7 volts we talked about that before it will start conducting and the main thing to realize is that like I said I assumed we have at least a 50 gain right here and this transistor is probably somewhere between 100 and 300 gain depending on how much currents going through it how hot it is and whatnot but that's kind of common for the 2N3904 to be in like the 200 range and uh, conditions will make it vary so you never go by that generally you start with worst case scenario so I assumed at least 50 gain and so that's how I set the uh, current I wanted at least 20 milliamps so I gave about 1 20th of that from the uh, about 1 50th I mean approximately from a base to emitter and we did see we got you know somewhat close to 50 times the current going through there so we probably could use a lower value resistor but you want to stay conservative especially for a switch so that's the main thing for every charge we're gonna go with conventional current going through there at least 50 also followed it right through there but if no charges went through then no charges were allowed through the transistor the uh, bipolar junction transistors are going to let a multiple amount of current through now the load actually limited the current and uh, if we put this directly to the power supply rail it may be more current than the transistor can handle the 2N3904 can only handle about 200 milliamps of current but the load ended up being what limited the current in this case the resistor and the LED so we just needed to limit the current to what would protect the LED and uh, it did its job perfectly fine in that aspect so now let's uh, build this circuit and I thought I would find a better looking uh, schematic here's an older one but I haven't come across one going through my uh, old documents so uh, 
we'll just use this one. This one will work just fine though, plus back in the day I took a picture of it, so that says 2N3904, and then the one below it, 2N2222. They both start with 2N and have the same pin layout right there. Uh, the 2N2222, if you need more current than the 2N3904 can handle, the uh, 2N2222 can probably handle about 600 milliamps of current. And uh, the A, I think the A is for higher voltages than just the 2N2222. So that's another thing. You check the data sheet for all that information. But this is a simple circuit that doesn't need anywhere near what these two can provide. So we're not going to obsess over that. So now the uh, switch circuit. So I have here the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor and I accidentally said you could use a lower value resistor you could but uh, it'll just be wasted current but uh, I meant to say you could use a higher value so we'll actually look at that coming up let's uh, let's do the uh, resistor first and because it's gonna be hidden by the transistor quite a bit so we're gonna put the resistor the base resistor right there from the switch to the base of the transistor so the emitter is going to be to that negative rail so what we're going to do is uh, again we could go to either side let's go to this side for variety this time and uh, we will plug it in right there so we're at the bottom of the switch there and I accidentally set it to the ground rail so there we go I do that a lot more while I'm filming because I'm usually looking through the camera when I'm wiring it to make sure you can see everything. But uh, it's still easy to accidentally wire in the wrong spot. So here's the transistor schematic symbol for an NPN bipolar junction transistor. Hopefully they have a part number next to it. And uh, you can use that part. Hopefully you have that part. If it's a 2N3904 and you have one, that makes it really easy. Otherwise, you have to make sure as I said before, the 2N2222 can handle more current. So you got to look at the current that it's going to handle, make sure it can handle that. And if it's turning on and off really rapidly, you have to make sure it can do all that and whatnot. But for the most part, uh, NPN, bipolar junction transistor, if it has this uh, symbol, the arrow is not pointing in NPN. If it's pointing in, it's PNP, which has the opposite chemistry. So currents go the other way. But otherwise, it's the same other than currents going the other way and voltages so the emitter to the negative rail the base to that resistor right there the base resistor and so we can measure current right now through the uh, base to emitter we don't need the uh, collector to be doing anything at uh, this part of the circuit so I still know it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor and the light will be a little better there I go across the uh, switch and so I can still stay on this side right there and uh, I could also go up there it looks like it might have a little bit more going through just a tad bit more without the collector so again that's not a bad idea to take that kind of measurement now we're gonna come to the load so the load in this case is a resistor and an LED so the load it, it doesn't matter what it is all we have to look at if it's a switch is whatever we want to turn on and off and after that point we have to make sure we're given enough base current to provide the uh, collector to emitter current and uh, that's by looking at the expected gain of the transistor so the LED the short lead the uh, cathode goes to the collector because that has to be more negative so that's the ground symbol that indicates the negative side of a DC power supply most of the time and then so the long lead the anode we're gonna go up one row right there and uh, the resistor 150 ohms to uh, get us close to the 20 milliamps of current and we already looked at the uh, base current I'm not gonna focus on that anymore and if I hit the switch you can see there that we got our 18 19 whatever there we go 19 again it's probably like borderline so that was with the 10 kilo ohm resistor which I estimated will work for about a 50 gain so over here I have a 33,000 ohm resistor so just a spec more than three times the resistance again I'm gonna put it to the bottom of the switch and uh, to the base of the transistor and I'm giving a false signal with my body again 
and uh, my body is actually pushing a little current through and then it's trying to pull current but that's a diode so it won't so that's about 60 times a second I've done videos on that but in any case now that's uh you can see orange orange probably right there for 3000 three so three three and then zero and then uh black for zero and then a red stripe for to let you know that it's in the tens of thousands basically and so now we'll hit it there you can see again we have that 18 milliamps of current maybe it'll drift up to 19 maybe we're just right where that's the uh, most current that we can get now because of the base current that we got but in any case there you can see this works perfectly fine for that LED so we're wasting less base to emitter current and uh, let's do that let's check that one really quick and just to kind of emphasize that so that's the balancing act with the NPN bipolar junction transistor how much current you're putting through the base and there you can see it's about a third to make the math easy of uh, the current and that's because it's three times the resistance going to the base and so we we know that we have a gain of uh, probably if we did the math we could get it more exact but it's probably at least 150 right now for every milliamp of current that goes through 150 will go through but uh, we're working lower than 150 milliamps so we can use a lower amount of current at the base the main thing is whatever current amounts going through base to emitter at least 150 times will be allowed through collector to emitter and the load is actually what's going to limit the current because it's lower than the current the transistor will let through. So, in any case, hopefully that all made sense. If you got any questions, uh, make sure and ask because uh, off the top of my head, I don't think I can simplify this anymore. Now, that's a switch circuit. That's one thing to be aware of. When you're dealing with other, there's all kinds of other transistor circuits. And so, look at those. They'll have a usually a base schematic hopefully they got more detail on the components and whatnot and you can build it but the main thing is you want to always be thinking about what's the current going in and that current can be coming from a different power source I did a recent video on that I had this power supply powering the rail and then the uh, breadboard power supply over here putting the because uh, it was a lower voltage putting the current through the uh, base to emitter so it was setting the current the other power supply was doing the rest. They don't have to come from the same uh, source of power. But uh, the basic rule applies. A certain amount of current goes base to emitter. It allows a multiple going through there. And you usually just have that multiple be larger than what you need. And then you uh, tamper it back in some way after that. In this case, we tampered it back with the uh, load. And then other cases, there's other ways you tamper it back with feedback or whatnot. But the basic principle remains the same. So I rambled on about that over and over, but that seems to be the sticking point. Understanding that a little bit of current allows a larger amount of current. And whatever the circuits are, they're taking advantage of that effect. That's why it's an amplifier. So that's the other thing. It doesn't take a signal and make that signal stronger. The signal just tells the transistor to conduct more or less or whatnot, and then you take advantage of that, and so you can power more than you could have with the signal, because the transistor and the power supply are what's actually uh, determining how much power it gets, not so much the signal. The signal just tells them how much to provide. So, hope that all made sense. I'll make sure and put the link to the uh, web page on there in case you don't want to watch long videos you just rather read it brief summaries and uh, hopefully enjoy the uh, page I'll also post some other videos on here make sure you check them out click uh, subscribe and uh, click the bell so you get notified of new videos thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one